Hey, what's up guys? This is again Showtime with MZ back with another video and another the second part of the iOS 15 all new features and changes and today we are going to take a look at the applicational changes which is the changes that are only new and only true for the certain applications in this video we will cover eight applications so there will be the third part of the series of iOS 15 new features where I will cover other applicational changes so make sure to click like to this video as well as subscribe so that new video comes out faster and if you want of course to check out the first part where I discuss the design changes UI visual changes then click the link right here so you can click it and watch it but we are starting this part so here we are the iOS 15 is again in my hands on my iPhone and today we are testing even more cooler features. So let's begin. Today I will be testing the applicational changes which is the changes that are inside the applications. We will cover only these 8 applications from FaceTime to Clock and we'll see all the changes that the iOS 15 has to offer in these current applications. So let's start with the FaceTime. So as you can see, the interface is already quite changed. And this is how it looked on the iOS 14. So a great difference over there, as you can see. Uh, so the first differences that you can see uh, is that the edit button is from, uh, changed from blue to green to really match the face time. And now other things are very much changed as well. So in order to start a meeting, you had to tap the plus button. Now that feature is gone because you can tap the new FaceTime option over there and the new FaceTime call will begin. So let's start the new FaceTime meeting. So it'll, it will of course ask you to whom you want a meeting. So I'm gonna tap basically anyone I want and in why you can FaceTime them just by clicking this link. And as you can see, here we go into the FaceTime. So as you can see, here we have iOS 15 and here we have iOS 14, the FaceTime UI has very much so changed. So as you can see in the iOS 14 times, we had ourselves in here and if we would tap it, nothing would really happen, right? Only the controls would pop up from the bottom of the screen. And now if you take a look at the iOS 15, which is very much so changed, let's see what's changed. So as you can see, if we tap on our icon, we see an enhanced look of ourselves and we see how we look in the camera of the person who we are FaceTiming at the moment, as well as we have a bunch of cool options. So for example, of course, we can go out of this mode as well as we can tap this button. And what it allows us to do is very cool. It's a very cool feature added to FaceTime. Look at the background of my image. Look at the background, what is happening over there. You see, now it's normal. Now it's the way it would look if we were shooting with an iOS 14, for example. But as soon as we tap this button, it dims, the background dims. And yet, we enter the portrait mode inside the FaceTime. That's really, really cool feature, which I really like. And now let's move forward. So if we are gonna tap now on this button over there, it will allow us to get some effects, as you can see, which will be on the bottom of the screen. And there are a lot of effects actually. So we have emojis, some other stuff. We can add the text to what we are doing. Text, for example, and hi over there. And uh, another person who we are inside this FaceTime will see, oh, a little bug over there. <laughs> First time I'm seeing this. So yeah, if we take a look at ourselves, now when I've added the text, as you can see, it pops up right over there, like somewhere over here. And the, the colors of this text can be managed very well, as well as a bunch of cool features with the effects tab over there. We can get some emojis, stickers, as well as we can get some real emojis over there. So many, many cool features, many, many effects actually added to the FaceTime right over there. So as you can see, there are a bunch, bunch of such new features, such as emoji stickers, memoji stickers, text, filters. Wow, filters actually, that's a new thing as well. 
Yay! We can get some cool filters, as you can see right over there. And we did have, I think we did have this availability in the previous, yeah, we had the effects, but uh, now they have changed quite a lot. And also, the controls, the controls have changed as well very much, so uh, now I'm gonna turn off all the things. And yeah, so as you can see, while in your mode, like while looking at yourself in the FaceTime, you can change the direction of the camera, where it is facing and what is being shown over there. And you can zoom in and out, as well as add the effects and all the sort of cool stuff. So. I really like it, you, yeah, you can zoom in and out very well, which is quite a great thing, which I don't think anyone expected from FaceTime, like it's just a FaceTime, right? Nothing zoom or anything like that, but now it is, now it is greater. As well as actually the controls have also changed. So as you can see, a person turns off the camera. This is how it looks like a post video animation which is pretty new we just tap the screen and then all the good controls pop up and we can tap it and bam the screen the camera is paused there you go this also works with the microphone as you can see microphone is now off uh, and it also works with the speaker, so you can take a look at where, where this um, sound is going transferred to. So now it's just the normal speaker of the iPhone. And you can even message a person right from the FaceTime while you are talking with them. Just like a Zoom chat basically, but FaceTime chat. And also the share play is also available, but unfortunately I don't have it somehow at the moment because I'm talking with the a device that has iOS 14 at the moment. Now furthermore, if we go to the control center, we actually have some new controls over there, especially for the iOS 15 FaceTime. So as you can see, we have video effects and if we tap it, you can of course turn on and off the portrait mode right from there as well as we have the microphone modes and if we tap it the sound sounds quite differently so this is the standard version that we also had in the ios 14 but we also have voice isolation and wide spectrum so now i will try to demonstrate how they sound how differently they sound hey guys this is the standard version of the microphone that you also can unlock on the ios 14 if i'm not mistaken so it's just a normal regular thing like normal thing for the facetime uh, microphone audio quality i guess you could say now this one is uh, the voice isolation one which basically isolates all of the background noise if there is such if there is any background noise basically i don't think at the moment i have any background noise but if there is then you shall not be hearing it at all and now this one is the wide spectrum uh, audio level the microphone uh, quality the microphone mode uh, the wide spectrum which if i'm not mistaken basically enhances all the voices that come into your facetime call now another thing that is also new with this new FaceTime interface is that when, this is how it looks when someone's camera is off. So they show you their profile or their users' uh, names first, um, actual letter. And when you are muted, this is the sort of notification that pops up right in the top of the screen. And you can tap it to unmute. Now the next thing, right from this home screen of the FaceTime, what you uh, might have already noticed is that you can create a link. There is another option. And so when you tap it, you get a bunch of options. So FaceTime link, you can add a name to this FaceTime link. So meeting, for example, and tap OK over there. And now we will have a meeting and you can send it directly to the user that you want to join your FaceTime meeting by 
airdrop messages and all the other availabilities as well as you can copy the link for example it will be copied to clipboard and once the link is already created it will be already here and the, every time you go into this the other people can also enter it and then you can join we get this green button of join over there and then the link will be joined and it's a it's a pretty cool thing definitely uh, so it's like in zoom you have your own link your teachers have your own links and uh, which can be entered by the students now it is also free which makes it even cooler and even better this feature uh, in this uh, iOS 15 and alongside with the new join button we also get the new leave button to leave the meeting that it has a specific link to it and you can also get the information about it you can share a link you can join the link and you can delete the link and the last thing that is new with this new FaceTime is that when you are uh, searching for the new FaceTime we have another option over here down at the bottom which says email from camera and now you can use your camera if you have email of someone written over there on your uh, phone or maybe on the paper and so when you will show the paper to uh, this one it will tell you to slow down and then it will start tracking sort of the email address if there is any of course on the paper that you are showing now at the moment I don't have any email addresses on this paper but you kind of see how this works definitely right over there and then you can insert you have the button to insert the email once it already recognizes it and you can even facetime people with the emails not to mention of course the great thing that while creating the link of the facetime it can be shared not only with the people who use ios devices but also with the people who use android and they can go to your facetime meeting with the web browser that they are using Moving forward with the calendar application, while here, uh, when you are uh, using it in the landscape mode, or portrait mode, and then you're turning it to be in the landscape mode, we have actually new uh, design overall, which shows you the preceding meeting, or the meeting that is scheduled on some day that is close, as well as we have availabilities of day, week, month, and year, also search and also some other options over there which we didn't have in the iOS 14 so in the calendar application the iOS 14 if we would just uh, put it into the landscape mode this is what would give us and of course this one is definitely a better view of the calendar landscape mode furthermore while adding a meeting or while adding a new event we have kind of a new sort of um, design overall so this is how it looks on the iOS 15 and this is how it looked on the iOS 14 so as you can see it's more minimalistic the borders are not crossed of the boxes not completely basically so here is the side-by-side -side comparison you see the difference over there and also while editing the time of the meeting this is how it looks on the iOS 14 so you had to basically you had the scroll wheel but it was very very hard to use it and you had to type the time of the event that was going to happen but now in here with the iOS 15 the scroll bar or scroll wheel is back so when you tap it bam and here you see the scroll bar is back yeah so scroll wheel is back as well as the date well date so choosing the date is pretty similar to what we had previously uh, with the iOS 14. So this is how it looked on the iOS 14 and now this is how it looks on the iOS 15. So only the scroll wheel while creating the time of it is now back with the iOS 15, which is a great thing. I hate it to enter the time uh, number by number. So yeah, the scroll bar is definitely back with the start and ending dates of the event, which is a pretty good thing. Now that's it that we had with the calendar. Now moving forward with the photos application. As you can see, the arrangement of the applications, or well, the arrangement of the photos is quite different in here. So this is how the arrangement of the photos looked in the iOS 14. So we had three photos in a row, and now we have five. Five photos in a row, so it's more sort of minimalistic design, or probably the con on the contrary, 
uh, not the minimalistic one, but well, call it as you wish. Write in the comments, by the way. Furthermore, while tapping the three dots in the upper corner, this is how it looks now, as opposed to what it looked, uh, how it looked with the iOS 14. So this is how it looked. It would just simply the options would pop up from the bottom of the screen, which is of course not as good, of course, as this one when they simply pop up in the minimalistic version, in the minimalistic way of things. And we also have, so as compared to the options of the iOS 14, we had aspect to aspect ratio grid, and now it is only created, it is only named aspect, and it basically makes it like this. So I don't know who might be using that, nothing new, but just the name is changed of the function. Now, in the filters, if we take a look at them now, we have all the icons besides the names of the filters. Well, in the iOS 14, we didn't have icons if we tapped on the... We didn't have the icons if we would tap on the filter and not filters. It would say that... It would just show the filters without the icons as you can see right over there as opposed to ios 15 which just looks like this as well as in the options we actually have one more option which says show map and it will basically show the map of the world and it will show you basically where the photos have been taken that you have on your iphone also when you tap on that and show map button over there what it allows you to do is that not only what we have shown nearby and hide nearby photos availability but also if we tap on this i info button over there we have different types of the map so we have a normal map as you can see right over there we have hybrid map which looks just like this and we also have the all great satellite map which is my personal favorite and it looks basically like this well it needs to load but we basically have the satellite mode as well now moving forward if we take a look at the icons on the bottom of the screen they are more rounded so for example take a look at the albums icon or on the library icon as opposed to what we had with the ios 14 so they're more square edged over in the ios 14 and more rounded in the ios 15. all right so now when you are also editing the photo, so for example, when you tap the edit button over there, you have the option to mark up right in here and now you can start marking up your photo as you wish. So mark up option is already on the main screen of editing instead of just clicking on the three dots over there, which we had previously and then tapping the markup button over there. Now that's gone. Now we have the markup button right over there. Now another great thing, probably the greatest thing that we have with the photos is that now you have this little info button over there and it basically gives you the description of the photo that has been taken, it shows you where it has been taken, it shows you when it has been taken, it shows you the amount of the space, amount of the storage that it is taking up on your iPhone, as well as time, date, place uh, and lens information even so a lot of great details with each of the photos that you have on your iphone now if we go to the for you section and in the memories memories have actually changed quite a lot so on the tab they automatically automatically start playing which is quite interesting we have different controls of stopping them so now it is this is how it looks if you want to stop basically the memory as well as we can adjust many many things such as for example we can adjust the music that is playing on the memory so right over here we have a bunch of cool options with the albums and all and we can also add the effects or looks actually to the memory that we are having at the moment so there are different looks such as black and white uh, contrast fade warm bright and many many others now also we have another button over there which looks like a grid view but actually if we tap it we get all the photos like a list of all the photos that are in this particular memory also, while the memory is playing, we have a, uh, two options on the upper side of the screen. One is, of course, the sharing option, but the second one gives us even more options. It's the famous three-dot option. And we tap on it, 
we have a lot, a lot of basic options such as add to favorites, we can change title of the memory, we can manage photos that are in this memory, as well as make a key photo. Uh, we can also change the duration of the memory, as well as we can airplay to any airplay device that we have. And also this make favorite thingy is also available over available over here if you tap on it this heart icon if you see it right now I don't know but if you tap on it it will make this memory favorite and by the way right next to this heart icon if we tap on the three dots we can change title of the memory as well as delete it and feature it less and the last thing that is also new with the photos application is that we now have the availability for the live text and what it basically allows us to do is that if we have a photo or screenshot or if we basically take a photo of something that has something written on it we get the option over there in the, in the bottom of the screen like this and we tap it it's called live text and it actually identifies all the text that is written on that simple image and then you can copy it paste it you can select all you can look up translate share and even more and so it's quite accurate actually, you can basically copy it. And so it works with many, many other photos, not just this one. If you have a, a photo of someone's number, if you will actually uh, put it to the live text, the feature that is right over here, you can uh, uh, long press on it and it will call the number that is on that photo, which is also a pretty great thing. Now, as far as the cameras are concerned, we have only, well, first of all, of course, we have the icon change, which I've already discussed in the previous video. So if you want to see it, then click the link right here. I'm not going to dive deep into uh, how the camera icon has changed in the iOS 15. But another change that we also have in the camera application is that we have a new icon for the effects. As you can see, this is how the effects icon looks on the iOS 15, so just a uh, minor change, but still uh, the one that deserves to be noticed. Moving forward with the mail application. So now we are actually able, so while composing a mail, when we tap on it, we have a new feature or actually new availability over here, which is says email from camera. And what it allows us to do is quite interesting. So we're gonna tap on it, and uh, so we're gonna tap on it and if we have someone's email written on a paper uh, or on something else on which a camera can be directed, the camera will, with using the live text, it will be able to read that email and then that email will be automatically spelled inside the mail application so that you don't have to type the email letter by letter. Now next up on the list we have the notes application and we have actually a lot of changes in here. Now here on the main screen if we're gonna tap on the three dots the select notes icon which is right over here is changed. It was different previously but now it is like this. As well as while inside in creating a note the checklist icon is also changed. So as you can see So as you can see right over here, this is the checklist icon and it is quite changed as well. Once in the specific note, while tapping the three dots, we have two new options over here. The first one is of course the print option, which will basically allow you to print the uh, note that you are having at the moment, right like this. And another one that is also new is uh, this one, handwriting feedback. And if we're gonna tap it, this is what Apple has to say about this one. Help us improve handwriting recognition by submitting this drawing to Apple. And to, so you're gonna basically submit a drawing over there. And now last but not, certainly not the least, uh, we are able now to create tags inside the notes, tags. So uh, this is how it works. So we're gonna just simply go ahead and tap on the hashtag button over there. And now it creates a specific tag. So for example, hashtag apple, and now the tag apple is created. So you can see right over there. I even have a specific screenshot of that about what's new in notes, which says organize with tags. And tag, add tags like hashtag travel anywhere in your notes to categorize them, as you can see right over there. 
Now the penultimate application that we are going to discuss in this particular part of the iOS 15 new features is the reminders application. Here, as well as in the notes application, when creating a new reminder, we can add a tag over there, as you can see. So if we're going to tap on the details, here it is. The option to add a tag, tags, and then you are going to tap, type here every single tag that you want. So I'm going to tap Apple over there. And then when a reminder is created, you can then sort them by the tags. So they will appear right over here in the bottom of the screen. Now this feature is actually explained while creating a new list. So if we're gonna tap on the add list, as you can see right over there, make into smart list, organize using text. And uh, so yeah, organize using text and other fillers as you can see. So yeah, that's what it is about. So yeah, we can now add tags over there, even to the list that we are creating, not only to the reminders that we are creating. Now previously, right, while adding a new list or creating a new list, this space right over here was blank. Now here we have written a list name, as you can see right over there. So it's pretty minor change. Now in the section schedule, as you can see right over here, in the three dots application or in the three dots, we have now the availability to print the scheduled reminders, as you can see right over there. They create a new note or, well, actually a new printed page. So, which you can create in the landscape, as well as in the portrait modes. In the iOS 14, we didn't have the three-dot option in the Today section of the reminders. Now we do actually have them, and they introduce quite a lot of things. So we have select reminders, print, as well as sort by, and we can sort the things by many different um, features or many different things, manual, deadline, creation, date, priority, title, earliest, first, latest, first, and all that sort of stuff. Actually, the sort by thing is quite new as well, and it is added in both flagged as well as inside the, inside the reminder section in the my lists. As you can see right over there, uh, in the three dots, we again have this new section which says sort by and you can really sort your reminders by priority and other things that are listed over there, which I already read previously in another section. So that's a pretty cool little detail. And we have finally transitioned to the last application of today's part. So this is the clock application. So the thing that is new is that while editing or creating an alarm, when you tap on it, the scroll wheel is finally back. Previously, we had to only um, like enter the date by numbers, just like in the, re uh, in the uh, calendar application. But now finally everyone's favorite scroll wheel is now back, but there is a hidden feature that can actually activate the previous numbering, entering numbers thingy over there. If you're gonna tap it, then the numbers appear. So quite little detail over there. And in the stopwatch, previously we had all the lines over there, but now lines only appear with the laps, as you can see right over there. Now the lines are over there, like this. I don't know if you can really see it, I think you don't. But yeah, there are certainly lines like this over there. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to click like and subscribe down below. And be stay tuned for the next part of this video with more applicational changes with the iOS 15 new features. And if you want to know how to download the iOS 15 beta, the video is right here. So you can click it and watch it. And that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks again and bye.